uh, welcome to the online course on heat transfer uh, we were discussing module 3 convective uh, heat transfer and in that uh, we were into forced heat uh, forced convection heat transfer this is the lecture 4 in this series if you recall in the previous lecture session uh, we had discussed different aspects of the velocity and thermal boundary layer uh, we solved the boundary layer equations which were uh, the simplified versions of Navier-Stokes equations and energy equations uh, using an approximate method which is uh, which is termed as the energy integral method and we obtained the solution approximate solution of Nusselt number for two limiting cases that is when Prandtl number is very low and when Prandtl number is uh, very high and we also discussed what happens when Prandtl number equals 1 uh, we get something called as Reynolds analogy so this was what we discussed in the previous session in today's session uh, I will be solving a few numerical examples on external flow forced convective heat transfer and during this entire uh, module so I will be referring to the data handbook uh, by C. P. Kodandaraman and S. Subramanian. Uh, this is published uh, by New Age International uh, Publishers. And the handbook that I will be referring to is the seventh edition. So, if you have a newer edition, so you please uh, try to match uh, the correlations that we will be using in the class with that uh, uh, in your book. So, mostly the correlations have remained intact in the newer editions also only thing is there is a small addition at the start of the uh, handbook so you please take care to see that uh, uh, you use the same uh, correlation that we employ in the class okay while solving the numerical examples and the problems that you get uh, here and i will be solving in the class are mostly uh, chosen from your uh, VTU semester and examination question papers and I have made an attempt to select the different types of uh, problems that you might uh, get in this section and mostly you can divide the problems that you get into three groups one is problems which are exclusively based on boundary layer theory and uh, on the other side you will have problems which, uh, which are related to calculation of heat transfer rate uh, when there is a flow over an external uh, flow over a flat plate and also some problems on flow over cylinders and spheres. So these three categories of problems you might uh, get in the examination. So let us try to concentrate on these three types of problems and uh, see to that we cover uh, maximum uh, problems that we can uh, do. Okay. With the paucity of time that is so we'll see as much as possible with the time available we'll cover as many examples and uh, i will also give you some assignments if possible so so that you can work out and gain some confidence okay let me start so the first problem that we will be solving today let us take it up okay so this is the first problem So the, I'll read out the problem. The problem says an approximate expression for the velocity profile u, which is a function of x and y, for the laminar boundary layer flow along a flat plate is given by. So he has given a, a correlation, uh, sorry, a distribution for your uh, velocity in the x direction, which is u. And he says that it is a function of x and y. And it is uh, a sinusoidal variation that he is giving where the boundary layer thickness delta is given by 4.8 times x by square root of Reynolds number at any location x and he says boundary layer is exclusively a function of x we know that so there is no variation of uh, this uh, as a function of y we, we have discussed this in the previous class so you are asked to derive an expression for the local drag coefficient and also to develop an expression for the average drag coefficient when x equals l from the latent. So this is the 
problem statement that we are having at hand. Let us see how to solve this. Okay, so I'll solve it uh, using a whiteboard. Let me switch over. Okay, first of all, let us uh, take up the given thing here. So he says he has given a velocity profile. Velocity profile. Okay. So this is u by u infinity equals sine of pi by 2 times y by delta. Okay. And he has also given you the distribution delta. Sorry, he has given you the boundary layer thickness also. Delta is 4.8 times x divided by square root of Reynolds number. So this is what is provided to you. So you need to develop uh, an expression for the local drag coefficient, which is the same as skin friction coefficient Cfx, and also the average drag coefficient when x equals L. So this is what he has asked you to calculate. Okay. So let us quickly look into the nomenclature. So this is the one which we have used. So if this is the flat plate. So the boundary layer thickness is given by delta at any x. Okay. And uh, what is u infinity? u infinity is the free stream velocity. Okay. Rex is Reynolds number at the given location x. So these are the things that we had. Uh, uh, used in the discussion in the previous session also okay now first let us see what is this definition of the screen, uh, skin friction coefficient so by we have we know that so this is basically a fluid mechanics problem because there is no uh, heat transfer aspects involved it's just using your boundary layer theory to solve it so you have this already the wall shear stress is your skin friction coefficient into half rho u infinity squared. This is what your uh, wall shear stress is, the expression for calculation of wall shear stress. Now, um, if uh, I want to calculate or develop an expression for this, I should know the shear stress expression. So how to do that? From Newton's law, you know, from Newton's law of viscosity, from Newton's law, okay, so we have tau Wx is mu into del u by del y when y is zero, okay. So this you know from your uh, basic fluid mechanics. So now how to uh, develop this expression. So you have u which is given to you as u infinity into sine of pi by 2 times y by delta. Okay. Now let us differentiate this with respect to y. So u infinity is a constant. So sine theta will become cos theta pi by 2 y by delta. Okay. Into your constant that is pi by 2 times delta. Since delta is a function of x only, obviously uh, when you partially differentiate it with respect to y, so it will be a constant. So this is to be calculated when y becomes 0 at the wall so this is the y-axis so this is y equals 0 so when this is 0 you know cos theta will become 1 so therefore let me write it here del u by del y when y becomes equal to 0 will be pi u infinity divided by 2 times delta Okay, 
so therefore tau w x wall shear stress is mu times pi u infinity by 2 times delta so this is one uh, expression that we can get okay now since we want the uh, uh, skin friction coefficient let us substitute it in the above uh, equation that we had considered at the start so let me erase this uh, some part of it uh, just for to make some make up some space so i'll just erase these things okay so we have the shear stress expression so let me substitute that so on substitution so this is mu times pi u infinity divided by 2 times delta equals cfx half rho u infinity squared so just cancel out uh, the terms one u infinity will get eliminated so therefore cfx that is skin friction coefficient at x is given by mu times pi by delta into rho but we have an expression which is given for uh, delta let us just directly substitute that here so this expression so this is nothing but mu into pi divided by 4.8 times x into rho in the numerator you will have square root of uh, Reynolds number okay so further simplification is possible you know the definition of uh, Reynolds number so what is the definition of Reynolds number we know that so I'll write it at the side here so we know that Reynolds number at any given location x is rho u infinity into x by mu okay on substituting that here in this expression so you will have cfx therefore and simplification you do 0.654 using your calculator pi by 4.8 that is uh, square root of mu square root of mu divided by square root of x rho u infinity and just check out uh, whether the simplification is correct or not okay so if there is any error you please rectify it so this is the expression for uh, cfx but if you see here uh, if you look closely this thing this ratio that you have is nothing but rho v into x by uh, mu this is nothing but reynolds number so therefore cfx is nothing but 0.654 by square root of reynolds number so this is the final expression that we want okay so this is the uh, expression for uh, local skin friction coefficient or drag coefficient now let us proceed to the second part of the problem so we want to get the average value of uh, the skin friction coefficient let us see how uh, we can do that so the average value is given by so we know that again by definition the average value of skin friction coefficient is equal to 1 by L integral of 0 to delta CF sorry 0 to L because uh, we are integrating over the length length of the plate. 
so 0 to L Cfx into dx Cfx into dx so let us substitute uh, this expression here so this is nothing but 1 by L integration of 0.654 square root of mu by square root of rho into u infinity so let me take this x power minus half to the numerator into dx so obviously under the limit 0 to l so all these things are constants so this is a constant this entire bracket you can take it outside so when you integrate uh, x power minus half you will get 1 by 2 root uh, x so uh, and you substitute the limits so after simplification so you will get cfl average is 1.308 divided by square root of reynolds number based on length l okay so this is the final expression used if you look closely this is two times of uh, the uh, local value at l cfx cfl okay uh, this is how you need to solve when when you are given a problem wherein you are asked to uh, get the expression for the coefficients of drag uh, when given velocity profile in uh, your uh, boundary layer thickness okay so you please note this i'll erase all this let us go back to our uh, presentation again let us take up problem two So problem two is this one. In the previous problem, we were given a velocity profile. Now they have given a temperature profile. So obviously this is a more sort of a heat transfer related problem. So thermal boundary layer uh, is given in this case. So T, which is a function, temperature which is a function of X and Y minus Ts in this case is the surface temperature of we have used the nomenclature T wall, Tw, or both are one and the same. So the distribution is 3 by 2 y by delta T, that is the thermal boundary layer thickness, minus half times y by delta T whole cube, a cubic uh, profile. This is the profile, if you recall, we obtained in the um, uh, solution uh, to the energy equations in the thermal boundary layer. So you can go back to the previous session and just check it out. The thickness of the thermal boundary layer is also given to you as an expression. So again, this is a function of x only. So you are asked to develop the expression for local and average heat transfer coefficient. So this is the problem at hand. So let us uh, solve it again. So let me go back to that uh, white pole. Okay. Ah. So now let me quickly jot down whatever is given in the problem. So we were given T, which is a function of x comma y minus T s divided by T infinity minus T s. So this is 3 by 2 times y by delta T minus half into uh, y by delta T whole cubed. So this is the temperature distribution given and also he has given the thickness of the thermal boundary layer so which is 4.53 times x divided by uh, square root of Reynolds number into Uh, Reynolds number to the power of half that is square root of Reynolds number into Prandtl number to the power of 1 by 3 so this is what what is given as the boundary layer thickness okay so now how to solve this uh, uh, particular problem so we will employ the same approach that we did for the previous uh, uh, problem so let us first define what is the local heat transfer coefficient 
okay so by definition by definition the local heat transfer coefficient hx at any length x over the uh, flat plate is given by the conductive uh, flux k into dou t by dou y at y equals 0 divided by surface area a since uh, the numerator is taken as a flux so you need not take the area here sorry so this is also a flux in the denominator so h uh, this is divided by t of the surface or the fluid whichever is higher so let us take t infinity minus a so since it is not specified as to whether the fluid is hot or the surface is hot you can just write t infinity let us assume that t infinity is greater than ta for the solution of this problem okay how did i get this actually so this is nothing but convective uh, heat flux is equal to heat conducted heat flux due to conduction from the uh, plate heat conduction the right hand side is given by fourier's law the left hand side is given by newton's law this is h into delta t surface minus fluid temperature or fluid minus surface temperature so this is k the gradient dou t by dou y so k of fluid temperature uh, gradient of fluid in the y direction okay so let us uh, continue i'll erase this uh, slightly let me remove this okay so now if you continue so again we want dou t by dou y when y equals zero you just differentiate it uh, with respect to y since dou t is a function of x so it will become a constant when you partially differentiate it so dou t by dou y when y equals 0 so this will this is equal to p by 2 times delta t minus 1 by 2 delta t whole cube okay into 3 times y squared so this is when y equals 0 so this entire term will get eliminated so you will only have this okay so therefore hx is k times 3 ta 3 by 2 times delta t divided by t infinity minus ts this is the heat transfer coefficient uh, a local heat transfer coefficient so you can further simplify by substituting the uh, thickness of the uh, thermal boundary layer which is already given in the problem so let us uh, do it so if you uh, do the substitution and simplify i'll uh, save some time it's just algebra you please do it so you should be getting 0 0.332 into k divided by x uh, R e power half Prandtl number to the power of 1 by 3. So this is the expression that you will be getting. So this is uh, the local heat transfer coefficient. Similar to the previous case, so I will uh, skip some steps here. Uh, the average heat transfer coefficient is exactly given by the same type of expression 1 by L, 0 to L hx ds same uh, logic that we used in the uh, previous skin friction case so you please substitute and integrate i hope you can uh, do this on your own so i'll be skipping so i'll just write the result uh, for your comparison so the result will be hl average will be 0.664 Okay, two times of that divided by L into K Prandtl number to the power of 1 by 3 Reynolds number to the power of REL now to the power of 5. 
so you please work it out so you will definitely get it so you just integrate and apply the limits okay so this is the solution to problem two so whenever he gives a temperature profile whatever may be the profile so the procedure is exactly what we have adopted here so you please uh, have a feel for this procedure okay so let us all this let us go back uh, to the problem three Problem three, <coughs> yeah. Um, he has given. Let me read out the problem. Here at twenty degree Celsius, and a pressure of one bar is flowing over a flat plate at a velocity of three meter per second. If the plate is thirty centimeter wide. And at 60 degree Celsius, find the so the plate is isothermal. It is at 60 degree Celsius. Find the following quantities at x is equal to 30 centimeter. Okay, so you have to find seven uh, quantities: <coughs> boundary layer thickness, local and average uh, skin friction coefficients, thermal boundary layer thickness local and average heat transfer coefficients, heat transfer rate, total drag force on the plate, and finally, total mass flow rate through the uh, boundary layer. So, uh, these are the things, are the unknowns that you are supposed to calculate. Okay. So, let us again go back and uh, try to solve this problem. Okay. So, he has given you, yeah. Let me take the problem the geometry it is given. So he has given you a flat plate. Okay. Over which air is flowing. Air at 20 degree Celsius. Uh, air is flowing. Okay. The surface of the plate TW is at 60 degree Celsius. So this is at the isothermal temperature. So at x equals, so this is uh, the dimension x. At x equals 30 centimeter. So you need to calculate some properties, or some parameters. So what are those things? First one is you need to calculate the boundary layer thickness, velocity boundary layer delta x. Second one the skin friction coefficient and the average uh, skin friction coefficient so both you have to calculate uh, third one the thermal boundary layer thickness uh, average and local heat transfer coefficient okay then the heat transfer rate q Sixth one is the drag force acting on the plate. And finally, the seventh one is the mass flow rate inside the boundary layer. So you will form this boundary layer above the plate. So what is the mass flow which is happening inside the boundary layer? That also you need to calculate. Width of the plate is also given in the problem. So this is 30. This is also 30 centimeters. Okay. So while solving the problems, you please uh, solve the problems in SI units only. So if there is centimeter, you please convert it into meter. Okay. So don't uh, use centimeter and millimeters in your calculation. Always use the basic unit or the SI unit uh, and convert the uh, derived units to SI units. Okay. Uh, like centimeter to meter like that okay now let us proceed to the solution of this problem don't worry about the uh, number of uh, unknowns asked it's a very simple calculation that you need to adopt okay first task always whenever you get uh, an external flow problem like this is to calculate the reynolds number so first we need to ascertain whether the flow inside the boundary layer is laminar or turbulent Okay, so how to do that? 
first let us calculate Reynolds number. So calculation of Reynolds number. Calculation of Reynolds number at x equals 30 centimeter or 0.3 meter. So this is what you have to do. So let me call this as Rv at x. So this is rho u infinity into x by mu. But the fluid properties rho and mu are unknown. So you don't know uh, these values. So you have to note these values from the data handbook. Okay. So that is why you need, require data handbook to solve convective heat transfer problems. Okay. From data handbook. From data uh, book properties of the fluid. So this is always the first step. Properties of fluid. I will discuss this in the next problem in detail. Uh, properties of the fluid. So now to note down the properties of the fluid, what temperature will you use? Will you use 60 degrees Celsius which is the wall temperature or will you use 20 degrees Celsius which is the air temperature? So what temperature is to be used is to be ascertained properly. Now actually you should calculate it at a temperature which is referred to as the film temperature. So this is film, F-I-L-M, film temperature. Whenever there is external flow, take it as a, a rule. You need to note down the fluid properties at film temperature. How do you calculate this? Very simple. This is nothing but free stream temperature plus wall temperature by 2. Okay. So here 20 degrees Celsius is the free stream temperature T infinity according to our nomenclature. So you just substitute for these two temperatures. So this implies Tf is 40 degrees Celsius. Now in your data book from your data handbook, uh, page number, uh, let me see, 34, page number 34. So you have properties of air at atmospheric pressure. So at 40 degrees Celsius, so you have a list of properties given. So there you note down density. What is the density value? So uh, you will be having something like 1.128. Only for this problem, I will do this elaborately. From next problem onwards, you can just uh, look it up yourself. So mu is 19.12 into 10 power minus 6 Newton second per meter square or kg per meter second. Okay. Be careful with your units. Prandtl number you need to note. Here it is directly given 0.699 and thermal conductivity K. So 0 0.02756 watt per meter Kelvin. So all these properties can be noted down from the table there on page number 34. And this is very uh, important for all the problems because you will be referring to this table numerous times uh, during this entire module 3. Okay, so once you note down these properties, calculation of Reynolds number is just substitution of this rho and mu that you noted down. What is u infinity value? Uh, the flow velocity is given in the problem itself, it is 3 meter per second. u infinity is given in the problem 3 meter per second, free stream velocity. So just substitute that and you will calculate the Reynolds number. So when, when you, once you do it, so the value of Reynolds number, so let me write it here only. Reynolds number, you will get it as 5.31 into 10 power 4. Okay. You calculated Reynolds number. Now what to do uh, with the value of this Reynolds number? So once you get the value of Reynolds number, you should comment on whether the flow is laminar or turbulent for your boundary layer. How to do? So you know that the critical Reynolds number, the critical Reynolds number in the previous class we noted this, critical Reynolds number for flow over a flat plate 
is 5 into 10 raised to 5. So this is obviously very less compared to RE critical. So therefore laminar boundary layer. If you do this, so you will have some marks. Some sorry, uh, some two to three marks they will uh, award for this in this scheme. So just doing this, noting down the properties from the data handbook and commenting whether the flow is laminar or turbulent will actually uh, get you around uh, two to three marks. Okay, you got the value of Reynolds number now, and you uh, uh, showed that this is a laminar case. Now. To calculate all our unknowns, so we can just use the data handbook and uh, we can just take the expressions directly from the data handbook. You go to page number 113, page number 113 in your uh, data handbook uh, that is in 7th edition. So I am uh, mentioning it again. So in newer editions, the page number may be slightly different. You should go to the uh, forced convection section in your handbook and you should select the external uh, flow uh, section in that okay so the formula to calculate uh, the uh, boundary layer thickness for laminar boundary layer is given there so actually this is an exact result so if you cannot remember this you can just directly note it down so the nomenclature he uses in the handbook is slightly different he uses a H uh, for hydrodynamic so we have just used a delta the, he will use delta H for hydrodynamic or velocity boundary layer and delta T for the thermal boundary layer and it is given by 5 times x by square root of Reynolds number at x. So uh, you have to substitute x equals 30 centimeter or x is equal to 0.3 meter. So substitute x equals 0.3. So you will get 6.509 millimeters. This is the uh, answer to the first uh, sub question. For the second sub question, okay, CFX is again given uh, in the same page the formula. So it is 0.664 by square root of Reynolds number at x. Okay, everything is a function of Reynolds number uh, for the velocity boundary layer. So this will come around 2.881 into 10 power minus 3. The average value CFL average when L equals 0.3. So this is two times of the local value CF at L when X, L equals 0.3 meter. Okay. So this is already calculated. 5.762 into 10 power minus 3. This you can calculate on your own. Okay. So this is the second uh, answer to the second sub question average. N. So you can see what I am doing is I am just noting down the values directly uh, the expressions in the handbook. So if you know how to use the handbook, so your task will be very simplified. Okay. So now let us continue very quickly. So it is monotonous. Number three, uh, thermal boundary layer thickness is given on the same page again. So at any given x is hydrodynamic divided by Prandtl number to the power of 1 by 3 or my uh, 0.3333. So this is, uh, you will get 7.334 millimeters. You can see hydrodynamic and thermal boundary layers uh, thicknesses are of the same order because this fluid is air and its Prandtl number is close to 1. Okay, so you can recall the significance of Prandtl number at this point. Okay, fourth, the local heat transfer coefficient Hx. So this is nothing but, so you can write it in terms of Nusselt number uh, Nux into K by X because Nusselt number is H into X by K. Okay, the formula to calculate this Nusselt number is given in the same page 113 that is 0.332 Reynolds number to the power of 0.5 Prandtl number to the power of 0.333. So this formula is given. This is also again 
uh, if you recall in the last class we when we use the integral method so we obtained an expression which is exactly similar to this same 0 0.331 uh, we obtained so this is the exact solution 0 0.332 the constant okay so when you substitute everything so hx is uh, 6.27 uh, sorry 237 237 watt per meter squared kelvin the average value at uh, 0 0.3 so is two times the local value page number in page number 114 so you can see nul average is given as two times nux so which uh, translates into this it uh, l is a two into this thing so this is around 12.474 watt per meter squared kelvin so on calculation you will get this okay so after you do this uh, this completes this uh, sub question 4 now for 5 so you want the total uh, heat transfer rate so always you should use the average value hl average area of the plate into t of the uh, plate surface t wall minus t infinity so what is area in this case 0 0.3 into 0 0.3 so uh, once you substitute this so you will get 44.9 watts so this is the uh, heat transfer uh, rate from the surface of your plate okay so after this let us uh, go to the last two sub questions one is the drag coefficient uh, drag force uh, we need to calculate let us calculate the drag force so how do you calculate the drag force you know wall uh, shear stress uh, as we used in the first problem is cfx half rho u infinity squared okay so this is nothing but the drag force divided by uh, your area area of the surface cfx half rho u infinity square so we have all the values already calculated area also we know so drag force if you substitute so you should get it around uh, 1.316 into 10 power minus the newton a very low value because this is year and it will not uh, exert any viscosity because the speeds are also very low so the free stream velocity is only three meter per second so even though it is low it is substantial but if the speed becomes very high that it uh, reaches closer to the speed of sound so you will have this drag force uh, at a very large value so this is particularly the case when you have supersonic flight uh, and uh, you uh, calculate what is the drag force on your wings so it will be very high very substantial okay even though the fluid is here which is a very low viscous fluid okay so now the last part we need to address so which is calculating how much mass flow rate is actually happening inside your boundary layer so this we will take it up now last uh, sub question so seventh one so mass flow rate how do you actually calculate so if this is the uh, boundary layer uh, you are having so you need to calculate what is this mass flow rate so th at this point that is when x equals 0 you know that the boundary layer thickness is also 0 at this value of x equals 0.3 you know the value of delta which you have already calculated at the first uh, uh, unknown of your problem okay so now if i want to calculate the mass flow rate mass flow rate is nothing but uh, rho area rho a into velocity u okay so what is this area so actually you need to integrate this area is 
since the z direction is unit uh, we, uh, it's non existent the z direction is not considered for the problem so what you can do is uh, according to the assumptions of the boundary layer it's a, a two dimensional uh, thing that we are assuming so you can just write the same integral in this way so it is nothing but integral of 0 to delta that is from delta equals 0 to actual delta i will write delta x1 delta x rho u dy okay only the y uh, direction you need to consider okay. now what is the expression for u we will assume this is assume okay u equals uh, u infinity if you want to assume a cubical profile so in the uh, solution to the uh, velocity boundary layer you have obtained the velocity distribution as like this so for a cubical uh, profile assumption so this will be minus half y by delta whole cubed okay this is the solution uh, to the uh, velocity boundary layer uh, the velocity profile when you solve using momentum integral method so you will obtain this even the exact uh, method will also give you this okay uh, i'll write it here momentum integral approach or von karman momentum integral approach momentum integral method when you solve it similar to thermal boundary layer what we have uh, demonstrated in the previous session so uh, you got the temperature profile here there you will get the velocity profile this was done in fluid mechanics you can go back and refresh so substitute it here substitute it in our uh, expression here and then after simplification so you can easily calculate the mass flow rate i'll just give it uh, to you as an exercise so you please do the integration and then uh, get, get back the uh, result that is uh, required okay so this completes uh, problem two and let us uh, conclude this lecture also in the next class uh, we will take up a few more uh, numerical examples on uh, external flow heat transfer we will take up uh, heat transfer related problems and we will conclude our discussion on external flow problems and later we can uh, do some two sessions on internal flow and conclude the force convective heat transfer okay thank you